went the next day, and to cut a long story short, he stayed there for over ten months praying for that one girl. You see how interesting this is? I'm talking about eternal things and some of you kids are talking your heads off. Hey, Blondie, let me do the talking. If you, if you talk again, I'll bring you out here. Or go home. I'm talking about eternal things. They burn. You'll burn in hell if you don't repent too. We're not playing. This is the most critical hour in American history. God wants to restore apostolic power, apostolic purity to the church. He never planned for the church to backslide. He never intended to be a wealthy institution. think of those that we have sung of in this wonderful hymn tonight and as we sang it we think of the tribes the millions who are still without God and without hope we sung about yonder sacred throng when you wind up all the affairs of this terrestrial ball on which we live when you end all empires industrial or the great empires of kings and rulers and between here and there, there may be many tribulations and trials. But we thank you again that as you brought us so far, you'll take us further right to the end of the trail. Grant, Lord, this meeting, which is not very large, but it's large enough to make an impact on this world if you get your way in every life tonight. We pray for your holy name's sake that you will invade this sanctuary tonight. We pray you'll work spiritual revolutions in us. We pray that some of us may go to our own funeral tonight and die to self and end all the failure and all the weakness and all that's been our handicap, all that's been our hang-up. Do work by the precious, precious blood of Jesus, the cleansing blood, the sanctifying blood, the blood of the everlasting covenant. Again, we ask in honesty, we ask with desire that this will be a very, very bad night for the devil. We pray that lives here where he's had dominion, that that dominion will be broken. Where he's been deceptive, that he'll be unmasked tonight. Where he's tried to make us fearful and intimidate us. Oh, give us a revelation of your glory and your power. We pray that the very angels in heaven may have a good time tonight, rejoicing over all bondage that shall cease. Take the veil away from your word. Take the veil away from our understanding. Open the word, open our minds, and then open our mouths to tell what great things God has done. Father again, save us from being earthly minded. Let the things of earth grow strangely dim. They look strangely grim when we get into eternity. 
we look back and see how often the devil fooled us and how often our own flesh fooled us and how often we were unwilling and undeserving and we gave up when we should have gone on change our thinking tonight change our desires change our aspirations make us captives as an old saint said in England years ago make me a captive Lord and then I shall be free force me to render up my sword and I shall conquer be I sink in wild in life's alarms when by myself I stand imprison me within thine arms and strong shall be my hand can you think of a man putting two hundred million dollars of God's money in a thing like that but the second circle is Bible lands with the what is it six stations of the cross how many is it ten or twelve one twelve the twelve stations of the cross animated the third is Oral Robert land showing, me, uh, showing him as a boy and who do you think is going to animate all the things now don't laugh it's true Disney after all the, the animated uh, Mickey Mouse and Minnie so why not do it for Oral I'm angry you send your ties for that stupid thing you're agreeing with the condemnation you'll be condemned with it you're agreeing with the worldliness of it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You know what? He's still outside the door. I believe we're going into the darkest days that humanity has ever known. So dark, they'll make the dark ages look like midday. He says, if any man hear my voice, when, the, when the, the whole of Europe was as black as night, one man heard God. And so many people say, I've got an Acts 2 experience, but Acts 2 goes into Acts 3. Where did Acts 3 get them? In jail. Does a, does a devil care what we have? All he's worried about is that you catch fire and then your church catches fire. And another thing I need to say this, I've gone round a bit, I know, but I've got to get wound up and say what I want to say. You see, the great revivals of Methodism were not in buildings, they were in the streets. The Salvation Army set England on fire. Wow. Not by buildings. They, uh, the Bishop of Gloucester said, don't ever let John Wesley or Charles Wesley in any of our churches. They were both certified men of impeccable morality, scholars, read the Hebrew and Greek. Don't let them in the churches. And don't let that man, George Whitfield, in the church at all. Tell me who was the bishop at that time. Nobody knows. Don't care a hill of beans. But we know the men that got kicked out. You know, some of you guys, if you're faithful, you'll be kicked out. At least that's my prayer. You know, the only time you can sing the hymn of Wesley, Thou, O Christ, art all I want. The only time you can say Christ is all I need is when Christ is all you have. We're propped up with everything. Our refrigerators are full. You know, we're overboard on laughter and happiness. There's an old saying in the world, laugh and the world laughs with you. I change it, I say, laugh and the church laughs with you. But weep and you weep alone. The one thing that's wrong with that world outside is it thinks it's done with Jesus Christ and it hasn't even started with him yet. For he stands at the end of the trail for every man, rich or poor, bondman or free, black or white, intellectual or ignoramus. But the hymn writer says, the eternal glories gleam afar to nerve my faint endeavor. So now to watch, to work, to war, and then to rest forever. I read there, the second death. And suddenly I said, I've heard a hundred sermons on the second coming. 
I've had a hundred on the second blessing. I've had a, had a hundred on the second coming, on the second birth, on the second blessing. I've never heard one on the second death. And it just a, a voice like that, I'm sure, just said to me, hell has no exit. And I turned around. What do you think I did? Go back to sleep? A million roads into hell and nowhere. Well, preacher, tell me, when did you last? Come on, be honest, don't raise your hand. When did you last preach on hell? Huh? Not sure the Dallas guys don't believe it. Cut it out of your Bible. You've cut it out of your preaching. What's the difference? You can listen to your TV and radio evangelist for ten years. You won't hear a sermon on the second death. They hardly dare preach on the first death, never mind the second one. Yeah. When did you last hear a sermon on TV about hell? About everlasting destruction? It's not fashionable. It doesn't bring the money in. It doesn't tickle the ears. It tickles the conscience. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I sat at my desk and the tears began to pour down my face. This man is in torment. You've heard me say more than once, I'm going to heaven and I'm not going for the weekend. And some of you are going to hell and you're not going for the weekend. I didn't have time, I'd like to have had a piece of paper put across here with this printed in big letters on it tonight so you'll see it. Hell has no exits. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. And he seeth Abraham afar. You know that thing got hold of me? And it still has hold of me. We have a little creature in England like a rat, but it has a beautiful coat. It's called a mole. And, and men trap them, and then they have them skinned, and they, they make ladies' coats. They're very beautiful. You can see them all going on the, on the street, uh, or in a field, pick it up. Why, did, why didn't it run away? Because it's blind. But if you hit it and kill it, its eyes open. It's blind all its life. Its eyes are open, immediately it dies. You know that's a tragedy with millions of people? They go through life blind, blind to God, blind to God's righteousness, blind to His justice, blind to His holiness, blind to His commandments. And in a moment of time they wake up in hell. The Lord shot the name of a man into my mind. I've never seen the man in my life. I knew he used to be considerably wealthy. I don't know much about his name even. I know his son, I love his son very well. I began to think about that man with all his privileges in social life and everything, but his name is not in the book of life. And he's going to be participating in this second death. There are millions of people going to hell, and what? Unless the Church of Jesus Christ wakes up, they'll still be going a year from now. I've said to you over and over again, we are, we are not eternity conscious enough. Live in time for eternity. If you could get every holiness man and woman, not preacher, but every holiness man and woman in America, eternity conscious. If they'd pray in the light of eternity, if they'd live in the light of eternity, if they'd get up in the light of eternity, and go to bed in the light of eternity, and talk in the light of eternity, and buy and spend in the light of eternity, and pray in the light of eternity, we'd have a revival that would shape the world in two years. Not about this. You're saved. Your daddy's lost. Have you broken your heart over him lately? Is your daddy going to sit in hell and see you at the marriage supper of the Lamb? And all you do is turn over scriptures and mark scriptures and memorize verses and he's perishing? Why God's name is your humanity, never mind your spirituality. The most precious thing we ever handle is the human soul. The Pieta one day will go up in dust. The cistern chapel will be blown to smithereens. But the soul of a man will live forever and ever and ever and ever. Either in eternal darkness or eternal bliss. Heaven 
is impeccable joy. There'll be no sorrow. Hell is eternal misery. There's no joy. There is only one way to heaven. There are a million ways to hell. He was not willing that any should perish. Master, forgive and inspire us anew. Banish our worldliness. Help us to ever live with eternity's values in view. Say that great man who birthed that revival, God, stamp eternity on my eyeballs. You know, if we can't live as a different breed of people on this earth, we have no right to live here. We shouldn't be affected by changing customs or changing styles or changing opinions or whether the stock market goes up or down or whether the clouds are gathering for... That, that doesn't make any odds. We ought to live every day as though we come out of another world into this world with the power of that world upon us. To live and speak and move and have our being in Jesus Christ. It's going to be an awesome day. Have you kind of figured how you'll get on when you stand there? Before all the saints of all the ages and you and I are to stand there alone on the dais and be judged for the deeds done in the body, for every aspect of our lives, for our praying, for our giving, for our living, for our talking. No, it's not so simple to be a Christian after all, it's a majestic thing. I remember crossing a square in the city of Bath in the 1940s. I saw two very fine young ladies, well one was a young lady, the other was only a girl and they were erect and beautifully dressed and they marched across that square and I thought there's something different about those girls. And then when I went round the other side, I discovered it was they were princesses at that time, our present Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth and her sister Margaret. It was the princesses of the royal family and you know there was a dignity about them very different from anybody else who walked. And the word of God says, as he was, so are we in this world. We ought to live eternity conscious in time. Ready to be cut off at any moment. Supposing you were cut off this moment, this moment would, you, would you like your life story read before all the millions in eternity? Do you think you might shrink when you hear how God used a, a David Brainerd or John Wesley or some little washerwoman down there that has a life of intercession? You're going to have a reward one day, isn't she? because she was doing it as unto him. And I don't care, there's no burden too heavy, there's no situation too hard for the one that you love. And if we're love control, love motivated, motivated, motivated love energized, it'll be all right when we stand up there. If God Almighty should call me to control six universes, not six worlds, six whole universes, I would joyfully do it because he give compensating grace. But he said I wouldn't want even to look after six sheep without his guidance. Oh, it's easy to be emotional. There's nothing wrong with emotion. You've got to have some emotion. But it's wrong when that's all there is. We thank you tonight for one, the only one who could put away sins what all the blood of beasts on Jewish altars slain could give, not give one guilty conscience peace or wash away one stain but Christ the heavenly man takes all our guilt away Lord we read in your word today that our high priest does not need to make an offering every day once in the end of the age he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gates of heaven and let us in. Oh, dearly, dearly has he loved, and we must love him too, and trust in his redeeming blood, and try his works to do. Father, we thank you tonight for every redeemed soul, not only here, but to the ends of the earth. Lord, I look at some of these men, I know, but for the grace of God, they may be in prison tonight or in hell. When they were ready to fall on the edge of the precipice, out of time, into eternity. When there was no eye to pity them, your eye pitied them. When there was no arm long enough to reach them, your arm reached them. When there was no hand strong enough to grasp them, you lifted the beggar from the dunghill. I look at these precious fellows here tonight, these Mexi Mexican brothers, these Indians tonight. 
Lord, I bless you that one day around the throne of God in heaven there will be from every kindred and nation and people and tongue. Lord, whether some have been saved ten minutes before they were raptured or served Christ for fifty or eighty years won't make any difference. We think we're, we're going into a society which is ageless, endless, sinless, but not joyless, it's full of joy. Jesus is going to reign forever and ever. Lord, we bless you for that day when you said every knee shall bow. Forever.